Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, it's travel season and people are taking vacations and taking pictures all over the place so they can share those with friends and family and show people what they saw. And because of that, we're getting all kinds of questions about panoramic photography. Specifically, we got a question from Marco and Marco said, can you tell me more about panoramic photography, what it is and how you edit it? Well, we can absolutely do that. And the cool thing about uh, shooting panoramas is you can not only show people where you've been on vacation and do some really neat scenic photography, but you can also use this inside if you're maybe a real estate agent or just want to show somebody the inside of your house. Or like we did, we needed to show somebody Studio A, and so I shot a quick panorama, and that's what this looks like here. So you can see that you can use this for all kinds of stuff. So what we did here in Phoenix, it's about 110 degrees, so we shot outside, tried not to melt, and we we shot this really cool uh, sequence. It's a panorama of Papago Park. So here it is, our tutorial on panoramic photography. All right, I'm here at Papago Park in Phoenix, Arizona. It's about 110 degrees out, so we're gonna do this pretty quickly. But there's this really cool amphitheater that I just love. And so to capture this using my widest lens, I can't even get it all because you can see it is gigantic and there's this huge rock behind me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my tripod and my camera and I'm gonna start taking pictures and we're gonna get this really high resolution panorama of the Papago Park uh, amphitheater right here. So let me set up and we'll start shooting. All right, well, the first thing I need to do, I've got my tripod set up. And let me tell you a little bit about the tripod that I'm using. This is a Benro Travel Angel. And uh, this tripod, the head, is a, uh, it's a ball head. And so what that means is normally I can mount a, a camera on here, move it all around, which is really good. Now, normally a ball head is no good when you're doing panoramas because when you move your uh, camera, well, everything is going to get wonky. But on this tripod, we actually have a pan ability on there so the ball stays the same and I can pan my camera which is really good. Now the other thing that's really important is you want your camera to pivot right at the center point of the pivot and so if I'm shooting horizontally that works pretty well so when I pivot the camera it's pivoting right there in the center but I want to shoot vertically because shooting vertically gives me higher resolution image because I get these vertical images so they're taller and I'll shoot more of them so I have more pixels in each uh, in my panorama than I would if I had a small horizontal image. Well, that poses a problem because if I tilt this to shoot horizontal, you can see what's happening. Now I'm not pivoting in the center anymore and that's gonna make all my images wonky. So what I'm gonna do here is I have rigged up an old L bracket is what this is called. And uh, Panorama's got ones that are probably a lot better than this because this one's really old and I just sort of made it work for my camera. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this on my tripod to make sure that the center is lined up and so it's rotating right on the center. So let me make sure that's right. And it is. Now everything's rotating right on the center. So my rotation is good. But the next thing I need to do is frame the shot and make sure my camera is level. And that's what this thing is right here. This is a bubble level and you can see it slides right onto my hot shoe. And that allows me to make sure that the camera is level. So I'm leveling it right there. Then I'll twist the camera all different directions and it is level all the way around. And so that makes sure everything's set up. So I'm gonna have a level shot all the way around. I'm shooting, shooting vertically. The next thing I need to do is make sure I've got my, uh, my shot lined up because I wanna make sure that my rock doesn't fall out of the scene and it doesn't, everything looks good all the way around. Checking my level again, and I'm level, good. So that is all really good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to meter the light, and I'm gonna do that using manual metering. So I'm gonna turn on my camera here. I'm at f16, because I want nice uh, extreme depth of field, and my camera is telling me I need to have a shutter speed of about 50, so that's not fast enough, so I'm gonna open up my aperture a little bit. So I'm about 60th of a second at F, uh, F13. So that's really good. My exposure set, my tripod is set, I'm all level. I'm using a uh, 16 millimeter wide angle lens. Now let's get shooting. So the cool thing with this, on my Benro tripod right here, there is a really small indicator. And this indicator shows me the degrees of rotation of my tripod. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot every 15 degrees. So I'll take a shot, move 15 degrees, take a shot, move 15 degrees, 
until I get everything together and that'll really make it easy for me to line up those images perfectly. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to start over here. I'm looking in here and I am at 60 degrees. So I need to end at 60 degrees at least to make sure I have 180 degrees. So I'm gonna start shooting. So I've got that shot. All right, well now that we have all of our images in the camera, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take them back to the studio, put them in the computer and stitch all of this together. Okay, well now that we're done shooting, I have, uh, what I've done is I brought all my files in. I just put them on the desktop in a folder called Panorama. I'm in uh, Bridge right now, and we're gonna use Photoshop to create our panorama because it's really, really simple. And so you can see the different files, uh, uh, photos that I took. So this is the first one that I did in manual mode. And I actually like the uh, shots I did in aperture priority mode a little bit better. And so uh, that's the ones we're going to use. And I'm also going to use the RAW file. So these all say CR2. That's uh, the RAW file format for the Canon camera. And so we're going to start way over here. That And you can see sort of the, uh, the images as I can pan over here and see exactly how those were working out. And we've got some issues that we have to deal with. So we're going to put these all together. Then we've got to get rid of some of these sunspots and sort of make things look a bit, little bit nicer. So I'm going to select all of these images. And that's going to have uh, more than 180 degrees of uh, view, and we're going to stick those all together. So to do that, I'll just go right up here to Tools, and then you can see Photoshop, and then there's this thing right here that says Photo Merge. So when I click that, Photoshop opens, and then Photo Merge appears, and it gives me all kinds of options. And so on the left here, we have the layout, and this is depending on really what you need to do with your pictures. And so we're going to use auto because it does a really nice job, you'll see, uh, of making sure everything is lined up and blended in a really nice way. But you can also force Photoshop and Photo Merge to do things the way you want to do. So if you want to make sure that, for example, if you took a, a panorama of a building, well, because the edges are going to be farther away from the camera than the center, well, Photoshop's going to have to enlarge those and so you get sort of this bow tie effect and then you would crop that to make it look pretty cool or there's cylindrical and spherical and you can do collages and you can even have stuff that uh, repositions your images so if you uh, shot handheld you can even make this work that way it's pretty amazing so what we're doing here here are all the files that we selected in bridge and we have some options so blend images together you really want to choose that and you'll see how that works it's pretty amazing so all the different uh, things that maybe make the edges hard in a panorama are going to go away. You can have a vignette removal. So if you have a lens that has some vignetting going on. And then also geometric distortion correction. I'm going to choose that because I want to make sure that the edges uh, are looking nice uh, at the edges of my panorama. So once I have that all done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, when you click OK, you might need to run out and get a coffee because it might take a little while. We're using a Mac Pro that has um, a pretty beefy processor, and this is still gonna take a few minutes for Photoshop to do all this work. So by the power of editing, we're just gonna pause for a second, and I'll show you the completed results. So now what's happening is Photoshop has brought all of the images in, and it's put them on different layers, and that gives us a lot of power later on if we want to do some fine tuning of our panorama. And uh, what's happening now is Photoshop is using the magic of some algorithm to make sure all of these layers are aligned correctly. And so it looks like a nice seamless panorama. So we're going to wait and let this finish up. And then the next thing that Photoshop is going to do is to make sure all the layers are blended correctly. All right, now Photoshop is doing this thing. It says generate output panorama. And so what we'll see here in a second is the initial output, but it's then gonna go to the next phase of blending all those different layers. So as this finishes here in a second, you'll see here is our initial panorama. And you can see that we have all of these hard lines between all of the different images that we shot and those need to be blended and so that's the next step so we'll let Photoshop finish its work and you'll see a huge difference between the initial uh, panorama that Photoshop created and the blended panorama so it's really important that you click that blend layers at the beginning because if you don't this is what your panorama is going to look like and that's really no good okay the next step is Photoshop is creating layer masks and because all of these different images are on different layers 
Well, I'll show you once this is finished how these layer masks used for blending are really, really powerful. And uh, it's, it's pretty amazing what you can do with this. So Photoshop does a bunch of stuff automatically, but then it gives you all the power to go back and change how it made decisions. And we'll do some of that coming up here after this is finished. All right, well, here it is. Our panorama is finished. And you can see that uh, it, Photoshop has magically made this one big seamless panorama. Now, you're probably wondering, why is it curved? Well, because our lens is curved. And as we're rotating the camera, it has to correct for that. And so we need to do some things to uh, figure out how to make this uh, panorama as we're used to seeing. But before we do that, I want to go in here and show you what's happened on the layers. So I'm going to open up the layers palette. And you can see every single layer has a mask on it. And so I can go in here and start turning these on and off to show you exactly which layers were used to create each section. And you can see it's not exactly square like we would expect. And so sometimes these are just using little chunks. But Photoshop is intelligently choosing which uh, photos to use for which chunks. And it's pretty amazing how it all comes together. Now, if we don't like the way that this is done, we can always go into the layer mask and change the edges of those things, which is really cool. The other thing is because we shot vertical instead of horizontal, we have a lot more resolution. So we have uh, a lot of images, a lot of information going up and down and not as much going left to right. And so when we stitch all this together, we have a huge image. In fact, if I go in here, you can see that this is a really high resolution panorama. We can go through here and see all kinds of things. In fact, I can go up here and I think there is some, uh, some trash. Yeah, there it is right there. You can actually see the trash in this bush. You can go up here and I think there's a helicopter up here somewhere. Yeah, there's a little helicopter flying around. So it's a very high resolution image. But what we need to do next is fix this up because we've got some lens flares. We need to increase the contrast. We need to sharpen this up. There's all kinds of stuff that we need to do to this image. So what we're going to do first is we're going to flatten this. And that just gives us the ability to make sure that the layers don't hog up all of the memory. And so uh, normally I wouldn't flatten it at this point, but I'm going to do that just for the illustration purposes to make sure that we get this thing done. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to flatten the image. That's going to free up some memory for us. And then I'll make sure this is an editable layer. Now, once I have that done, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to uh, uh, crop this. And so what I'll do is I'm going to grab the crop tool. And then I'm just going to drag this over here. Now, what the crop tool is going to allow me to do is choose the absolute top and absolute bottom piece. Now, the problem with this is I want to make sure I show the bottom of the amphitheater. So I can't really get as wide as I want to uh, using this technique. But that's OK for right now. I'll just pull this in right there. I'll pull this in right here. So we're throwing away some of the image data that we shot. Now, if I wanted to, I could have massaged this a little bit more to get some of that in there. But for now, we're just going to choose this. I sort of like that. And I'm going to accept this. And we're cropping our image. Now we have something that looks more like a panorama. Well, what we need to do next is do some fixing up. And so we can go into our layers. And we can do some things like maybe I'll adjust the levels really quickly. And so we can see that, yeah, we need to add some contrast here. So I'll do that. Maybe uh, bring out the blacks a little bit. But you can see the contrast is now looking a little bit nicer. And the other thing we need to do here is fix some of these sunspots and some of the other issues. So I want to show you something that is, I think, pretty amazing. I'll go over here. This is at full resolution. And something new to Photoshop CS5 that is just revolutionary. So we've got this post here. I really don't like it. I'm going to go in here and click on the Healing Brush tool. And I've got this set to Content Aware. Now this, I think, is miraculous. So we've got this poll here. I don't want it here. I will click, drag. There is no more poll. It's gone, just like that. And so I can do all kinds of things like that. It's pretty amazing. I'll fix that up just a little bit there. Uh, if I want to, I can go in. There was that bag of trash I didn't really like. Here it is right here. I'm going to scribble that out. It's gone. And I can do that on things that are very difficult to fix otherwise. For example, I have these lens flares. This one here goes over some bushes and some steps. And so I'll just go in there and scribble that out. Boink. Gone. Same with that. You know, you see this edges needs to be fixed a little bit, but I can go in there. You can see that I can really quickly go in and start repairing this image. And we're not going to do the entire image here right now, but you can see how this really, if I don't like this post right here, I'll just drag it out of there. It's gone. There's a car over here I don't like. Let me just scribble the car out of the road. Doink. All right, our car is sort of smudged out. There's a fence back here. I could maybe go in and fix the fence. 
it's gone. So this context aware healing brush is just amazing. Look at that. I'm just painting out the fence there. It's pretty cool. Um, so that's one thing that you can do with a panorama like this because you have such high resolution. You can just start painting things out. We could start uh, using a healing brush here to get rid of some of this. So, or I could even clone it in. So I'll just really quickly clone this out so that we don't have that nasty thing right there. So make sure I do this in the right way. I could do some uh, other kind of healing brush things like going here and use the patch tool to say, you know what, let's patch this up really quickly. And there it goes. That's fixed up. Let me patch this lens flare. And so by spending some time here, I can use the healing brush and patch tool and clone tool. And I can actually go in and do anything I want to this panorama. And when it's all done, it's going to look pretty spectacular. And that's pretty much all there is to creating a panorama in Photoshop CS 5.5. Well, thanks for the question, Mark. We had a lot of fun shooting our panorama, and it's uh, not so complicated. It's actually a lot of fun to do this. So I encourage everybody to get out there, shoot some panoramas, edit those, maybe post them to your Flickr page and share that with us. We'd love to see what you're doing. Well, thanks so much again for joining us. Remember, if you have a question like Marco did, you can send me your question to askmark at adorama.com, and we might just use that question on an upcoming episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Everything worked out great. This could not be a more boring panorama. So let's go somewhere else and shoot this. It just looks like it is horrible. Well, thanks for joining us this week. <laughs> uh, not enough coffee. All right, this is the winner right here. Hi.